Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we are going to be talking about integers modulo n, sometimes referred to as the integers mod n. So to start off, we need to establish what it means for something to be congruent mod n. So two integers a and b are congruent modulo n, or congruent mod n, if a minus b is divisible by n, or in other words, n divides the value a minus b. Another way that you can think of this is two numbers are congruent if they have the same remainder when dividing by n. So now that we've established what congruence mod n means, let's talk about the integers modulo n, written z mod n, so z with a subscript n, or sometimes z mod nz, depending on which branch of mathematics you are talking about it in. So the integers mod n are the equivalence classes of the equivalence relation on the integers defined by the congruence modulo n. It's a bit wordy, but what that means is we are saying that, um, for example, in Z3, our equivalence classes are the class of 0, the class of 1, and the class of 2. The different sets that are what result when we talk about what integers are congruent to mod n. So the class of A is the set of everything that is congruent to A mod n. And so the equivalence classes are going to be every possible class of numbers, um, mod n. So in Z3, there are going to be three equivalence classes, the class of 0, the class of 1, and the class of 2, which are the possible remainders we can get when we divide an integer by 3. So if we are looking in Z3, the class of 1 is going to be this. It's going to be all uh, it's going to be a whole bunch of things smaller than negative 5, negative 5, 2, 1, 4, 7, and so on, where we can continue to add 3 to get other entries like 10 or 13 or 301. All of those are going to be elements of the class of 1. So if you're having a hard time thinking of what integers mod n are, you can always think about these as a clock. So in this clock, um, you can think of our clock in real world in the real world as a representation of the integers mod 12 Where as you go around the clock, we are just going to keep cycling back through the different entries Now if you want to have this match perfectly with z mod 12 You can replace the 12 at the top with a 0 because that would be the more common representation of that equivalence class However, leaving it, as, leaving it as a 12 is just as valid. So, if we want to figure out where other numbers fall, we can just continue to wrap the numbers around. So we have 1 going all the way around to 12, but then when we get to 13, we have to start wrapping them over where we've already put elements. So 13 is going to appear at the 1 spot, 14 is at the 2 spot, 15 is at the 3 spot, and so on. If you're familiar with American military time, where they have like 2300, 23 is at the same spot as the 11. So 2300 is that way of saying 11 o'clock in the evening. Um, other countries have a 24-hour clock instead of a 12-hour clock, such as France, where 4 in the afternoon would be 16 hours. Um, because they are in the same equivalence class, they behave the same. So one equivalent class would be the set 2, 14, 26, and so on, as well as the negative integers, and that would be the class of 2 in Z mod 12. You can adapt this to change into the other integers if you need. So if you are dealing with Z mod 7, you would have a clock that goes 7 around before it starts to repeat. Once we have defined the integers mod n, there is also what's referred to as addition and multiplication in the integers mod n. So addition and multiplication is defined like this. If x is the class of a and y is the class of b, then x plus y, we're adding the classes together, that's going to be the class of a plus b. And if we are looking at the class of x times the class of y, that is going to be the class of a times b. 
Now, because equivalence classes have multiple elements, such as this circled in red, we have to figure out, is this definition valid no matter which values I pick, and am I going to get the same answer every time? And that's what's referred to as being well-defined. So the question is, is the addition of addition well-defined? Meaning it doesn't matter which representative we pick of the class for A, is it still always going to give us the same answer? So we are going to show that yes, addition is well-defined, and then we will also show that multiplication is well-defined. So to start, we have to show that no matter which representative we pick for the class of F, for X, meaning the class of A or the class of C, if both of those are valid ways to write it, we have to show that it doesn't matter if we add A and B or add C and D um, to get the same end result. So we are going to be showing that A plus B is congruent to C plus D if A and C are both in the same equivalence class and B and D are in the same equivalence class. So since the class of A is equal to the class of C, we are able to write C as A plus a multiple of N, and, B can be and D can be written as B plus a multiple of N. So that means that C plus D can be written as A plus NK plus B plus NL, which we can pull the N terms to one side and we get an A plus B plus N times quantity K plus L, which is going to be congruent to A plus B modulo n. Because we get the same thing modulo n every time, addition is going to be well defined on z mod n. Multiplication is also going to be well defined. So by saying that a and c are in the same class and b and d are in the same class, we are going to show that ab is in the same class as cd. So since the class of a equals the class of c, we can write c as a plus nk and D can be written as B plus NL. We multiply C and D together, and we get A plus NK times B plus NL, which gives us AB plus N times some integer, um, which I guess we could read as Kablanical, or KBLA NKL. However, that is going to be congruent to AB modulo N, which tells us that multiplication is going to be well-defined. Sorry about that typo, that should say multiplication. So an example, what is going to be the class of 17 times the class of 69 plus the class of 165 in Z mod eight? There's two ways to go about this. Let's do the harder way first. The harder way is to just straight up compute what that is and then find the remainder when we divide by eight. So it's going to be two. However, imagine if we were dealing with classes that were much bigger than 17, 69, and 165. You would have to multiply really big numbers together and then go through and do division. That can be very hard to do. So the easier way is to first replace each of the 17, 69s, and 165s with a smaller and simpler representation. So the class of 17 in Z mod 8 can also be written as the class of 1, the class of 69 is the same as the class of 5, and the class of 165 is also the class of 5. So we can rewrite our problem as being the class of 1 times the class of 5 plus the class of 5. So we get 5 plus 5, which is 10, which reduces to 2 in Z mod 8. And so that is the easier way to go about figuring out this if you are dealing with much larger numbers. Reduce first, and then do the problem. I hope this video was helpful in helping you understand the integers mod n. Um, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will hopefully be able to make another video about this soon. Um, please like and subscribe, it helps me out quite a bit. And I hope you have a wonderful day, and good luck with all of your math.